morning everyone and welcome back to another episode of Heart of Blaze. This is your host Timmy and this time it's going to be a fairly different one. First off, the episode comes with a video version on the Heart of Blaze YouTube channel which I'll link in the description box. As we all know, inflation has been doing all our heads in. Ah. Grocery in Sydney, where I reside, of all places has taken a pretty bad hit. And in a recent moment where I was very much struggling with my money, I started looking at my food options very differently budget, cooking habits, dietary variations combined and I found myself figuring out enjoyable meals at a very low cost and today I want to share some of that with you. So here goes our new segment, Cheat Meal Plans number one. Starting off with breakfast, I'll be making an Ovaltine coffee frappe. You add two tablespoons of Ovaltine powder and one sachet of instant cappuccino into a cheap blender. Add 100 ml or so of milk and stir to combine. I'm using long life milk here because it's cheaper. Add one generous handful of smaller ice cubes, blend until it becomes almost a slushy texture and pour into your serving glass or mug. This is optional, but you can grate some cheap chocolate over the top. I'm just using cooking chocolate here. Now, neutral bullet blenders are considered to be a bit pricey and bougie. Cheaper blenders are available and should do the job, but if you're not quite ready to buy one, here's the iced latte style version. Once again, combine the two powders, pour some hot water and stir it to dissolve that. Two tablespoons should be plenty. Add in 100ml cold milk and add a large ice cube or several regular. Top it up with more milk if you need and then mix it up and enjoy. For the food portion, start by adding two slices of bread into the sandwich breast. I highly, recommend it. I highly recommend this over buying a toaster as you can get a lot more uses out of it. And if you wish, add on some shredded parmesan cheese. Place baking paper over the cheese before switching on and then place the lid down. Keep an eye on it as it only takes a couple of minutes to make it really crispy. Heat a pan or pot on low medium heat. Gently saute two teaspoons of minced garlic until fragrant and just belly browning. Stir this frequently. Empty the can of baked beans in tomato sauce into the pot and give it a mix. I usually like to add in a tablespoon or so of hot water just so it's not too thick and it also helps with cooking the egg. Next, mix in the smoked paprika, flaky salt and black pepper and stir it to combine. You will want to taste the seasoning at this point. Crack two eggs on the side of a bowl and use both thumbs to pull the shell apart to drop the eggs gently over the beans. Place the lid on top to steam until the whites are just set and turn white. This is the time to check the toast. For either plain or cheesy, they should be crispy. Breakfast is served. I love scooping the beans and runny egg over the toast and biting into it. And a refreshing cold coffee really makes it for me. Your breakfast and drink came to $5.35. Oh yeah. Lunchtime rolls around and I'll be making chili, herb and fish pasta in tomato sauce. This recipe serves two meals. In a medium pot or pan, heat the olive oil on low medium heat. Saute the crushed dried chili just until fragrant, then add the minced garlic. You can use a little bit less because this is actually kind of on the spicy side and I, that's how I like it. Saute until fragrant and just barely browning. Stir frequently. Add in the sliced red onions. If unlike me, you have both hands free, then I would break them into the individual slices while sprinkling it in. Saves you doing it with a utensil after it's in the pan. Cook until they become soft, stirring often. Now add in the sardines in tomato sauce. A can of condensed tomato soup and rinse out the soup can with half can worth of water. Add it to the pot. Break up the sardines as much as possible then stir in the stock cube, sumac, dill and parsley and seasonings and the yogurt. Taste and adjust as you need. Now let it simmer and thicken a little while you add one tablespoon of cooking salt to a large pot of water. Bigger than mine if you can but it's not the end of the world if not. Bring it to a boil, add in the pasta, and I cook 2 minutes less than recommended time. This says 14, so just do 12 minutes. I like to use tongs to loosen the pasta once or twice during cooking to make sure it's cooking evenly. While it's cooking, you can stir in the cheese and check the consistency. 
the consistency is thick enough, I'd remove it from the heat and reheat it if necessary close to, closer to the pasta's finishing time. If it's on the runnier side, you can cook more and add more cheese, or even add some cornstarch mixed with water first as a cheaper alternative to act as a thickening agent. Just be sure to bring the sauce to a boil after. I added pasta water but realized I didn't need it, but I'm okay with soupy pasta since I know the oh flavor is great. God. Before tossing your pasta before tossing your pasta in the sauce, you should separate the upper portion to cool and refrigerate. Or if you cooked for two meals, you can toss the pasta in the sauce, then portion half for storage. Pasta in sauce and all. Your lunch menu came to just four dollars and thirty cents per person. Now, I can't be the only one that enjoys a little snack or treat between my meals. How about we make banana bread, but I'll show you three ways. Now, if you're using any dried fruits like golden raisins, first off, chop them finer so they're about the size of raisins, and allow 10 minutes or so for them to soak in boiling water to plump up. Otherwise, they'll be super dry in the cake. For the chocolate chunks, chips work too, but I've noticed chunks are so much tastier of an experience. Chop them into a small, a similar, chop them into a similar chunky cube, like a raisin size. I'm using just a cheap 50% cocoa dark cooking chocolate, um, and it tastes great. With sugar, Costa White give you a lovely basic banana bread, but you can sub that out one to one same amount with brown or dark brown sugar. Difference is just the level of molasses, which gives you a richer, slightly smoky burnt caramel notes. Characteristic colors and flavors associated with gingerbread cookies, for example. My recommendation is either of the brown sugar. I prefer the dark, but here, but here I'm using a mix of both brown sugar to clear my pantry. Now let's preheat the oven to 175 degrees Celsius and prepare the cake pan. Now I actually doubled the recipe, so you will see variation in amount in the video. But I've done this because I actually got four very overly ripened bananas that were about to be thrown out at work. So I wanted to use it up while demonstrating varying flavors for you. It's also not a huge banana bread, so honestly if I were you, I would make two every time. For the single loaf, which is roughly around 22 centimeters long, I simply crumple up a piece of baking paper and lay it onto the into the pan so it just has a little extra hanging over. If you're doing a double recipe in a square 9 inch pan like mine, then you'll line a strip of baking paper like a cross to cover the sides of the tin with some overhang on all sides. You will also want to line the single loaf tin as well and I'll show you why once the batter is made. So to start. Place your butter in a microwave safe dish and nuke it 10 to 15 up to 20 seconds just until it's almost completely liquid. The residue heat should finish the job. If you don't have a microwave, just over low heat in the stove and swell the pan often so it's not too hot. In a big bowl, add the melted butter, bananas and mash them up till it's mostly smooth. Most recipes use a fork, but I find a cheap potato masher or whisk does the job better. And whisk is the best because you'll need it for the sugar anyway after this. As we said, now whisk in the sugar and the salt until well combined. Then whisk in the baking soda followed by the flour. If you want to enrich your banana bread even further, sometimes I have almond milk, which is essentially finely ground up almonds left over to use up. You can substitute some for the flour. I wouldn't go more than one third of the full amount of flour as it has no gluten, so it will reduce your cake structure. At this point, the basic banana bread is ready to bake. You can stir in your toppings, chocolate or raisins before transferring to the baking pans. Since I'm doing two flavors at once here, I'm using a scale or you can just do it scoop by scoop to divide them into two bowls evenly. I stir in the chocolate in one bowl, then the drained out raisins into the other bowl of batter. Transfer one batter into the single loaf tin. Then move that batter with the baking paper into the 9 inch lined square pan. Now you should be left with space enough for another loaf worth of batter. So working quickly, transfer the batter over and then level and smooth the top of both batters. Ensure the two loaf batters are spread evenly in space before you place it into the oven to bake. 
the recommended baking time should be about 55 to 75 minutes depending on your oven and type um, but as a general rule always visually check with the oven closed at about two-thirds of the time then eventually you want to jiggle the pan to see if it's set before even using a knife to do the poke test after that on a 45 degrees angle into the center of the cake since the cake obviously bakes from edges towards the center now any baked goods baked in close proximity touching each other tends to lengthen baking time mine is like baking a slab rather than one loaf so it ended up taking one hour and 15 minutes in a gas stove oven um, and that means when you use the knife poke test taking it out the knife was essentially clean or with just a little bit of moist crumbs once done, remove from the oven and allow to cool until at least warm. This is a delicate cake, so if you're planning on slicing it, let it cool first. If you're going mouth first into the entire loaf, I'd say it's fair game the moment it's baked really. And don't worry, this chocolate that I used seemed like it stayed gooey the whole time, even when it was just at room temperature. But that also could be because it's very, very hot in Australia right now. So, your banana bread costs you $3.77 for the plain one, or $5.32 for chocolate chunks, or $5.57 for the golden raisins version. If you make two, store one in the fridge or freezer to save you the hassle for your next craving. I finished one in a day though, so, you know. Ding ding, it's dinner time. I accidentally cooked way too much rice a few days back and they're also too soggy when I tried to turn it into congee, into congee but failed. Congee needs very little rice so to be honest it's a poor choice to begin with. But here's a better idea, crispy rice pancakes. This is a really easy recipe if you have rice on hand or trying to get rid of rice and really tasty too. This is a lighter meal as I've had a lot to eat today but equally filling. First, let's get the rice sorted and mix some parmesan cheese into it. And then next, you'll heat up some oil in a pan over a low medium heat. Once it's hot, add in the white parts of spring onions, about a tablespoon worth. Saute until it's fragrant, then add in the minced garlic and again saute until fragrant and just barely browning. If you're using frozen veggies, canned ones are a cheaper option actually. You can put them in a bowl of boiling water to break them apart quickly, then strain and add to the pan. Give them a quick stir, then add the beans or chickpeas if you're using. It's mostly for some protein. Then add the rice mix, switch off the heat and try to evenly mix it up. This mix should make about six pancakes. Switch on your sandwich press and scoop a bowl about three tablespoons worth and roll gently in a bowl and roll gently in a bowl of cornstarch. Lightly dust off any excess and place on sandwich press. You don't actually want too much on this, just a very light dusting of it. Use a flat utensil or your palms to lightly flatten into a meat patty. Put baking paper on top and then close up the sandwich press. You shouldn't need to press too hard and it should spread evenly as it cooks. On my press, it took around eight minutes to cook out the starch and make it super brown and crispy. But taste one to see if you like it a little softer or more crisp. They are crisp and done when you lift it up with a pancake turner or such, and it holds its shape. Make the sauce by combining the six spices and seasonings with the maple syrup and mix it well. While the pancakes are hot on a pan, start glazing them with a brush or back of a spoon as much as you like. Um, sprinkle green parts of the spring onions and some sesame seeds if you wish, and enjoy it while it's hot. My spur of the moment thinking is if you toast it off some peanuts and ground it into powder, it's often a good breakfast topping for many food items in Taiwan, um, which is where my family's from. So this might be nice sprinkled on here. I'm gonna have to try that sometime. Anyways, I digress. Your dinner has you stuffed and only costs you 980. And that means your entire day of spending for food just comes down to $24.76. Wow. Um, on a final note, I will say that corn, carrots, and red onions, for example, combined with the cheese and rice, might make for a tastier pancake. Play around to find what you enjoy. Look for some like sweetness, some bite and texture. I checked the can section after and noticed it's got better mix of veggies in a good serving size, so check that out if you're making this recipe. 
um, also if like you don't have enough space in the freezer. Hope this helps you guys and girls. With this episode coming to an end, my favorite artist recommendation of the day is Adriel Rivera. Hopefully I said that right. Check out his track, Let's Stay at Home. I'm your host, Timmy. Lots of hugs and kisses, and I'll see y'all in the next episode of Heart Ablaze.